Thank you. Now we shall proceed with the next panel discussion, which will be graced by some of the distinguished personalities present with us today. I would like to welcome on stage Professor Wolfgang, Patrick Sins, Tarkhalid al Rahbi, and Professor Muhammad Khawa as the moderator. Hello. Yeah. Welcome to this final uh, panel discussion uh, session. I would like first to uh, start think, uh, thanking our uh, speakers for their interesting talks. Uh, I will start first by asking a few questions, and then I will open the floor to the audience to ask uh, questions. I would like to start with uh, uh, Wolfgang. You mentioned that one way to promote uh, force is to have a center of excellence in the research institution. Do you mean composed only of academics? Because we know in academia, people are interested in publication, in research, to get promoted. So how can you make sure that the center of excellence is in line with the force strategy by the government and not you know, diverted towards research only? Do you understand the, do you get my point? Yes, because when course. it stood from research institution, institution you meant university. And yeah. you know, university has its own requirement, its own objectives. And you know, academics are used to research, to you know, uh, publishing, to get promoted. So, how, who are the stakeholders in this center of excellence? Uh, yeah, that's uh, for sure. That's an important question. You know, when I was proposing to uh, introduce such a center of excellence, um, I was uh, uh, I was thinking about a unit about a unit which uh, is a little bit separate from the uh, academic, uh, academic uh, environment. It should be somehow integrated uh, into, let's say, the Sultan Qaboos uh, University, but uh, it should be a center of applied research. So not uh, uh, it sh for sure uh, there must be some, some re research uh, which could be done in cooperation uh, with the academic units, but there should be a very strong uh, relationship uh, with the outside world as well. Mm -hmm. You know, as to myself, I'm uh, for, no, for a number of years I was uh, working in the uh, IT consulting business, and so uh, I'm uh, I, I'm thinking that uh, uh, Oman should set up a unit which uh, uh, which is uh, comprised or which is uh, made up of a highly qualified uh, professional people which have a good academic background, but are closely working together with the government community or with the business community. Mm -hmm. For sure, it should not be a number of people uh, sitting around and writing uh, uh, knowledgeable articles about open yeah. source systems. I'm uh, thinking about a sort of consulting, high-level consulting unit, which could provide uh, consulting services on par with the international consulting businesses uh, to government and to private businesses in Oman. Mm -hmm. So it should, uh, should be connected to the academic world. Mm -hmm. And if you have to do some additional research, uh, you could uh, use uh, master's theses, doctoral theses, mm -hmm. and cooperate with the academic world. But uh, the unit itself should be able to provide um, uh, professional consulting services. And also you mentioned the uh, policies are not you know, existent yet. Do you think this center of excellence should uh, develop this po those policies? Well, it, uh, it should not uh, develop these, um, these policies. Um, these policies should be developed by the people who are in charge on the political level. But they should consult these people and make proposals. Mm -hmm. But uh, finally, you know, um, we, we've heard a lot of comments about open source systems and communities and so on. Uh, that's perfect. Uh, it's, it's very uh, necessary to have these communities. 
But you know, if we really want to employ something, management people need to be involved. Mm -hmm. And so we need a unit which can do consulting on a management level. Uh, we, of course, we need all these uh, open source communities, but if we, uh, if we want to do large scale projects in government or industry, uh, we need people who know the management level. Yeah, thank you. Just a question to Patrick. You mentioned that you need to find champions. Who will find them? Well, usually they find you. <laughs> uh, typically in a public sector environment, there are people that have projects and that uh, understand uh, the value of open source. Or even if they don't understand the per se the value of open source, they understand the value of uh, driving new solutions and binding it with uh, local developers. So they are willing to listen to you, they are willing to carry your projects, and they are willing to sit down and explain you all the things that you don't know about the specifics of the existing situation. So uh, you have to think about uh, rules and regulation, certification. Uh, the firm uh, is a certain entity uh, obliged to collaborate and communicate. So what are the interfaces? So uh, also, uh, what is the existing team of developers uh, and where do they come from? What do they know? How can you bring them to FOSS so that they feel recognized and feel better? And not say, oh, thank you for your good work, bye-bye, because it wouldn't be just, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't work. So uh, I would say, the nice thing in the early stage of the FOSS project with the government is that there are so many things to do. You shouldn't choose the things that are necessarily the most prestigious. You should first think, what can you do that will show that what you are able to do? And it might be a small project in a not very prestigious... Well, I will give a little sad uh, example. Uh, some good friend of my, mine made a package called Open Cemetery, mm. which means it manages a place of final rest. It's not something that you want to think about yeah. every day, but somebody has to do it. Yeah. And because they demonstrated the capacity to do this very important task, and not very fun task, well, they demonstrated the capacity of thinking about issues, managing it, and they got all the project. And it was in the city of Al. And the city of Arles has lots of open source projects. And that was the first, actually. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Any question from the audience? May, may I, may Please, I raise, make, raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if you allow me to make a, a comment right yeah. now. Um, I, I like your presentation very much. But uh, in one point, we are disagreeing. Of course, I have some practical experience in, in the IT management and information systems management, so I'm completely in line with your views about st starting small and not trying to tackle the uh, most pre prestigious uh, project uh, at first. For sure, that's not a good idea. I'm completely in line with you about that. But I feel we, we really have some, uh, some areas uh, where we can uh, start big. Let's uh, just uh, think about education. For example, it would, be, uh, it would not be a big deal uh, to, to use open source uh, software uh, on the high school level. Uh, you develop a, a curricula, you have a curricula anyway, you uh, just improve it a little bit, introduce open source software in high schools and in the, uh, in the laboratories uh, uh, you are using uh, at high schools. So that's... Uh, uh, will have a profound effect and is sort of huge project, but it's easy to do. So I feel we, uh, we should distinguish between different fields. So in some areas, we, I guess we can start with. Yes. Um, so I was involved in several uh, projects in, at the high school level. Yeah. Um, you have to think that, for instance, laboratory work is very vendor-centric for people that have uh, uh, microscopes that are connected to only window, uh, Windows PC or robots, but there is 
a lot of things you can do in the education, and I think one very important thing is to educate young people into a minimum level of programming, not uh, only maths and physics majors, but for instance, if you want to do humanities, it's very, and study sociology, you need to have a level of statistics. So uh, getting young people to learn about something like R, to manipulate statistics, or some simple graphic programming, is something that first of all enables them to understand that the program on the laptop or mobile phone are not done by magic, but by somebody. Mm. Second, it helps them to organize their thoughts in a uh, progressive and uh, iterative way. It, it, they, it helps them understand that to achieve something, you have to do step one, two, three, four, plan ahead and plan for failure, for restart. The algorithmic thinking is used for many things and not only for programs. So I think there would be a huge benefit. And of course, they will see that doing some piece of code and bragging about it and say, I did it, look at it, it's me, I did it, is a great feeling. And using something that a friend uh, does is also a great feeling. So that makes them understand why people are passionate about open source. Because it's all about communicating our skills, sharing our capacity, and growing together. Thank you. I agree 100%. Can we get a question from the floor? Thank you. Um, my name is Wasal. Actually, uh, I was holding the mic, and you said my comment while I was waiting for my turn. But it's just a matter of emphasis. Uh, you, uh, Prof. Uh, Wolfgang said something about that communities are good, but they need uh, management. Uh, th that's why, from my point of view, why don't the manage managerial uh, level initiate the communities? In other words, I can see that there are efforts from the IT aid. For example, they have uh, created the labs. Uh, so why don't the open source community start from the labs, for example, by assigning tasks and uh, projects that are aligned to high-level uh, strategic plans, instead of uh, in, uh, just focusing on awareness? Why don't we facilitate the labs in terms of building communities and, and, and assigning tasks that are related to uh, common objectives of our organizations? This is one way of going ahead. Instead of uh, what I can see is there are uh, efforts that are scattered. This is from my point of view. Thank you. It's just a comment, it's not a question. Do you want to comment? Yes. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I like this community approach of uh, the, uh, the open source uh, uh, community. Uh, I like it very much, but I feel it's uh, not sufficient. Unfortunately, you know, the discussions we frequently have uh, are always around creating code and, uh, and all these things. It's, uh, it's always on the technical level. But, uh, you know, these people uh, who are driving uh, the uh, free and open source movement right now, uh, I think most of them uh, do not have any experience in, in the business uh, or administrative management level. So they, from my point of view, I guess they have problems to talk to these management people and uh, they have problems to, uh, to think in management terms. So therefore we have some, some lack of discussion between upper management and the uh, FOSS people. Uh, it is will be very difficult to bridge this gap, uh, this gap because we, we don't have so many people who have uh, several uh, several educational backgrounds. You know, I, I've uh, been uh, I've a, essentially I have a business management education, and I've worked as a manager in businesses. At the same time, uh, I have worked in different areas in science. So uh, I feel I have little problems to talk to upper level managers. But if you have a, a very uh, skilled programmer, he uh, has no idea how, how business really works. So that, that's for sure there's a problem. And this problem, I guess, uh, cannot be solved by the open source community. Uh, I'd like also to point out uh, that management uh, is usually occupied by many tasks. So, Obviously, management, one of the tasks of management is to say, we need this solution, 
and to define how it should be built. But that's contractual. You, you find somebody to do it. Now, the decision is, will you open source what you committed to pay as development? The open source community can participate on something that is planned. It can make solutions that are not planned, and that's very interesting because it shows uh, a way to a need that was not addressed or not understood. So I think it's important that management is aware and say, okay, fine, let's put in place an infrastructure where on one side resources can do more or less what they want, and it doesn't have to be perfectly useful at once. But they build their capacity, their training, their knowledge, the knowledge of other software, the capacity to create software and to publish and to work in the open. Because it's also something a little bit complicated because every line of code you write in an open source platform is seen by many people. So you'd rather like it to be a little bit cleaner than, you know. On the other hand, there uh, should be a real reflection on whenever the state pays for one line of code, should it have to pay another one, uh, another way, uh, a second time because some other part of the state is also using it? Or should it put it on the table, let everybody use it? Obviously, some codes have uh, really uh, secrecy issues, but most of the codes that the state is using could be shared even with other states, and most importantly, within the state. So thinking that everything that's paid in the government could be open source is one important step. But of course, for that to be useful, you have to have an open source community that says, hmm, that's good code. I'm interested. I'd like to add something. So infra awareness, infrastructure, then you can have collaboration. I just have a question for uh, Khaled. Uh, which ministries are using this G-Cloud currently? And is the plan for all ministries to use the G-Cloud in the future in Oman? Or? Um, did we have a plan that it's going to be um, the, the infrastructure for Oman. But again, this well, currently, if, if we be very specific, right now we have on board um, the Ministry of Health on um, the government cloud and running. And also we have Lee Oman within the cloud. And there's a lot of also um, ministries and potentials coming up on the pipelines. And um, so um, in terms of, because as, as simple as that, what we're providing initially, we're providing as infrastructure as a service. Uh, uh, can start from a small website where you need a small servers, a virtual servers, and, um, uh, and that can be managed in, in a matter of minutes. Where in a traditional um, level of acquiring servers, it could take you a few months within the government. But now we overcome that, that uh, gap of times and money and cost in terms of like from few months into a few minutes. That's definitely would be a, especially within the infrastructure as a service, this is, would be like on fire. But um, yeah, we have right now EOMAN and we have also Ministry of Health as a customer. Okay. Any question? Yes. Uh, my question to uh, Wolfgang. Uh, first of all, thanks for your uh, nice presentation. Uh, you have mentioned in the presentation that uh, how to enable uh, localization of force. So uh, my question is, uh, how to enable the localization of force through the free open source uh, center of excellence? Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, free and open source software is uh, can be a starting point for a national uh, national uh, software industry. Uh, you know, if you are used proprietary software, uh, they uh, might allow you to do some minor modifications. Uh, if you are using uh, open, open source software, uh, the, soft, the uh, programming sources, uh, the source code is available, so uh, you could easily adapt uh, open source software to uh, needs in Oman. For example, there is uh, software uh, for a university administration, or there is uh, software is produced by the University of Oslo, uh, it is used in many, many countries, um, there is software to, to, uh, for, for the management of larger hospitals. 
and of course the needs of hospitals in Oman probably are a little bit different from the needs of uh, hospitals in, in Africa and other, uh, in other countries. So um, the, the Center of Excellence uh, could, let's say, get in contact with the University of Software, educate some specialists, uh, do some pilot installations uh, of this software here in Oman, uh, adapt it to the needs, and then somehow transfer the, the knowledge to private uh, service providers uh, uh, that they could continue the job in implementing the software which is now adapted to the needs in Oman uh, to, uh, to other hospitals. So that would be a model uh, I would imagine. Thank you. Uh, if, if I could add something, uh, to tr translate a large body of software, uh, it's one thing we did at uh, Mandriva, which is an industry solution uh, for the package. Basically, you, you have some tools to extract from existing software, even if it's not done perfectly, uh, all the parts that you need to translate, all the text, all the uh, interfaces, uh, all the documentation. And then you have, on one hand, the software itself, and on the other hand, the documentation. The first step is the software itself, because very often it's quite explanatory. Uh, you need then to use this software to basically show side by side the reference version, typically in English, and the Arabic version. Sometimes you have the, pro the issue with left and right movement, but that's, that's manageable, let's say. And the most important uh, step then is to have a team of uh, users that become familiar with the software and try all this, and to, uh, that are actually checking the work of the translator. But it doesn't need to be a very big team. Uh, at uh, Mandriva, we had maybe uh, uh, three people uh, managing the process itself and something like 20, 30 volunteers for uh, the main languages. So of course, it, w it's a, it was a multi-year program, so if you start now with specific programs, you will need a little bit more people. But it's, it's, it's a good way to start and to localize programs that you think are of interest to Oman and to seed uh, a, a repository of uh, open source software relevant for the public sector in Oman. Yeah, may, I, may I have an additional comment? I think we need uh, to carefully distinguish between these translation issues and customization. Uh, if we are talking about, um, about um, translation, we are talking about the user interface level. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the user interface level uh, needs, to, needs to be adapted to the uh, language which is uh, used by the users. But I think there are more issues. Uh, for example, in Oman, there might be specific uh, legal regulations which require some additional functions. So that must be, there must be then some additional programming and so on. And uh, so there is, I guess, uh, if you, especially if you are use uh, these uh, uh, enterprise resources or software in this enterprise resources planning area, uh, there must be more than just uh, translation. So, uh, and, and these jobs, probably could be supported by a center of excellence uh, which uh, forms the core of, uh, of uh, FOSS activities. Um, they could uh, uh, do, uh, do it in, in the proper way, in a highly professional way, and do a pilot project, and then it could be, could be distributed, and the services could be provided by uh, national service providers. Thank you very much. I've been told that we are I've been told that we are running out of time, and uh, unfortunately, we have to close the, the session. Thank you very much for your attendance. Well, and uh, we can take the last Thank you very much. Maybe you can discuss <laughs> later. Thank you. Is there any announcement to make? I think we are finished, yeah. Thank you.